What is the most valuable skill in your bag of tricks? Sharon Hornell from here. Welcome to day 1741 of What You Have to Know. Documenting the journey. Primarily start out documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. And it just kind of stuck. It's my way to document what I'm doing, keep track of what I'm doing. Although I could do a better job going back and listening to it myself and figuring out what it is that I'm doing <laughs> on some days. But, uh, it works for me, and it's, it's obviously worked for me for 1,741 days, so I'll continue to do it because I, we all have to find ways to learn and grow and move forward in our lives, and so this is where I get to kind of chat and talk about stuff that's working, stuff that's not working, what I'm doing. So today, I create two pieces of content, three including this every day, every morning, and I've been doing it for geez, going on five years now. Next year is going to be tricky. Actually, the next couple of weeks and the next month or so is going to be tricky because I'm traveling a lot. But next year, I'm having heart surgery. So haven't quite figured out or planned out how am I going to, and, and do I even want to, continue to publish and show up live every single day during my heart surgery and stuff. Maybe not. Maybe not so much. I have a hard time doing my face now because I can't see. So I can't imagine how I'm going to do it when I'm in the hospital getting heart surgery. But guess what? It's a challenge for another day, right? As my sister would say, future Sharon will worry about that. I can't stand that saying. Anyway, today we talked about the bag of tricks, our bag of tricks, the tools of our trade, the skills and abilities that we have, that we bring to make our life better, make our businesses better. We were speaking with respect to supersizing and growing our business. So what tools do we have at our disposal? And I shared a bat because sometimes we need a bat. Sometimes we need a pencil to communicate and, and that was to represent communication. Sometimes we need a magnifying glass to focus in on or hone in on certain, certain, certain skills or abilities. Sometimes we just need more caffeine to keep us going. So we talked about the bag of tricks and what we have at our disposal. And hopefully you're like me and you're a lifelong learner and you're always adding to your toolbox, your bag of tricks. You're always learning new things, learning new skills. But I came across this card as I was thinking about a topic for the annual challenge, the View 365 Day Challenge. We do one thing every day that improves us. And it contends that the most valuable skill or talent that we can create in our lives or have in our lives or develop in our lives because it's all about getting a little bit better every day. So what would be the most valuable skill to have and develop? And I guess I, I kind of knew this at a subconscious level, but I hadn't really ever thought about it and brought it to the surface and said, yes, that is something I know I need to improve and continually improve, but do I have a plan and a strategy and am I actually taking action and doing this every single day? And I would have to say, meh, not necessarily. Some days, yes, some days, no. Some days I'm good at it, some days I'm not. So what can I do to develop and intentionally become better at this thing? So what the heck is this thing? I'd love to hear your guesses on what you think the most valuable skill you could possibly develop is. And I think if I talk with other people that are gurus and thought leaders in different industries, they'll have different opinions and different beliefs about whether this is the most valuable skill or not. But the more I think about it, the more I actually agree with it because that's, that's what happens, right? We hear a new thing, we, we are exposed to a new thought or idea, and then we start thinking about it. We start thinking about all the examples from our past experiences that support that idea or thought. Or if we don't want to agree with it, we think of all of the thoughts and beliefs and feelings and experiences we've had that don't support that idea, right? Think of uh, politics or religion or any emotionally charged topic that you're talking about. When we hear something that challenges our beliefs, do we pull up all our defenses or do we open our mind and say, hmm, what if that were possible? What if that were true? And then we can still say, okay, well, the evidence shows me that it's still not true, even though someone else said it and believes it. We all believe lots of different things, right? Think of all the people that believed the world was flat for centuries before it was discovered that the world is indeed not flat at all. We believe things until something happens to cause us to choose to believe something differently. Guess what? There's still a bunch of flat earthers out there, supposedly. I mean, you hear about it every once in a while. So people can choose to believe whatever they want. 
What's most important is that you choose to believe what empowers and works for you in your life. So what is this? This number one skill they say, and the card says, I am developing skills to direct my thoughts. I'm developing skills to direct my thoughts. And I think this is so powerful. I'm going to share it here too and actually read it. It says, the most valuable skill or talent that you could ever develop is that of directing your thoughts toward what you want. To be adept at quickly evaluating all situations and then quickly coming to the conclusion of what you most want and then giving your undivided attention to that. There's a tremendous skill in deliberately directing your own thoughts that will yield results that cannot be compared with results that mere action can provide. So basically, they're saying we can take a lot of action, we can take massive action, and there's, there's tons of schools of thought. that If you just take massive action enough, you're going to get what you want eventually. But what if we were to direct our thoughts deliberately and concentrate on what we want and make our decisions and choices and decide what we're going to take action on based on the what we want versus the lack of or the what we don't want. So think of this with respect to we all want more abundance in our life, right? We all want more of what we want in our life. But how often, and I catch myself doing this all the time, do we think we're moving toward what we want, but we're actually spending our time and energy focusing and thinking about the lack of what we want or that we don't have it yet. If we're thinking that we don't have it yet and our thoughts are on, why isn't this mine yet? Why does this always happen to me? How come they have it and I don't have it, etc.? Then we're not focusing on what we want. We're focusing on the not having it yet, the lack of it. And if we're ever focusing on the lack, what are we creating more of? More lack of having it, right? If I want a new pair of shoes, and I keep thinking about, oh, I hate my shoes. I don't have any shoes. I need new shoes. Why don't I have new shoes yet? Guess what? I'm going to do all kinds of stuff to make sure I don't go buy those new shoes yet because my reality, my identity is all tied to bitching, moaning, and complaining because I don't have it yet. But as soon as I let go of that complaining and focusing on that I don't have new shoes yet, all of a sudden, I'll hop online, I'll buy myself a pair of new shoes, and I'll have gotten what I want. That's kind of a simple example, but it works that way for everything. We just have to know and start testing it and believing that it does. Because that is an example of directing our thoughts on what we want. So I actually love this topic. I'm going to try to, I'm not going to try. I'm going to figure out how am I going to incorporate knowing this little piece of information, choosing to believe this information. How am I going to incorporate this into my everyday activities from now on. That's how powerful I think that this little piece of information is. And again, I think, I think intuitively we know it. And we've got, we have got literally thousands and thousands of examples of how this has played out in our life. If we decide to go and say, okay, well, how has this played out in my life? Is this true for me? But we can do the opposite too. We can say, oh, I've known that my whole life. That's not going to help me and just keep doing what we're doing, right? All right. We're getting a new deck, finally, after what, over a year since the storms hit last year. If I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, I am doing projects just like we all are and figuring out how to incorporate this into my life and into the challenge maybe moving forward. All right. Have an awesome day. And, of course, we'll see you tomorrow.